Okay, before I finish putting it all together, I thought I'd show you the innards of uh, this dummy load. I'm building electronic adjustable load. Very closely based on uh, Dave Jones's design. The only difference is I'm using a different uh, MOSFET, uh, PSMN022. Um, I think I've got a, a 50k, I think I've got a 10k there or 5k, and I've also put a 10 turn pot in there as a, as a voltage dividing, you know, as a 10 geometer. Uh, that's that one there so that I can adjust the um, so I can adjust the range, the full uh, scale range. Um, and I've got this uh, little panel meter here with its adjustment pot. Uh, it already, from a, from a previous project, it already had a 78L05 on there. Um, so that's going to be powering, there we go, that's going to be powering that whole thing with a DC input jack, it goes into that. 7805 and then from there so this bit board with the op amp on it uh, is powered from 5 volts and the op amp is a uh, LT1013 um, one of the connections, the input and output connections there the MOSFET is under the bottom there with some thermal uh, adhesive tape on it so I can stick it down to the heat sink in a minute um, and that there's the one ohm resistor. That's just the one I could get from Element 14. Probably doesn't need to be a 10 watt resistor. Probably um, about two, four, five watts is more is probably enough. But that's what they had. It's a 10 watt one ohm one percent uh, resistor, and I've just stuck it down with some more with some other thermal uh, piece of thermal tape stuck down to the heatsink. So. So that's the DC input jack. I've just it's just screwed into a piece of aluminium that's screwed onto the end of the heat sink there. And a ten turn. That's our ten turn pot there, and that's wired into it. Uh, so that's basically all there is to it. So all I've got left to do is uh, that blue wire there from that side of the resistor has to solder onto the uh, the source of the MOSFET there, and this black wire here from the other side of the resistor has to solder up to the bottom of the, um, but yeah, the, the terminal block there, um, and then after that, oh, I've got to change the decimal place on this panel meter, there's a little wire jumper there, I've got to shift across, um, so that it reads, so it reads right in amps um, and then it all just gets stuck that just gets stuck down there there's a post there's like one of those uh, standoff clicky things I've got a hole there for it this is just double sided tape I'm just going to stick it to the inside of the heatsink here so I'll go ahead and put it together and then I'll show you ok it's now finished being put together after a few minor difficulties it's uh working so you plug anything from, from sort of 8 up to about 20 odd volts into there turns the display on it's centered at zero look at that now that's set to zero I've got it hooked up to a very old and dead SLA battery um, it's only at about 5 volts so it's completely dead but it gives me something to work with now the blue pot there 10 turn little trim pot there uh, sets it adjusts the panel meter and that is the pot in between the first and second amplifier op amp um, so that adjusts how high the voltage on the gate of the FET MOSFET can go okay so I've got it hooked up here through my uh, multimeter I'll just put the turning bale up um, turn that on so you can see that better so it does need some feet though because there's one screw under the bottom there which is bolting the MOSFET on and it it means it pivots around on the desk way too easily but not to worry. Okay so we've got the 
a multimeter set up here measuring uh, the current that's going through it. That's also measuring the current. Uh, backlight's gone off again. You can still read it. Um, so, all I have to do is connect up the ground of the multimeter to this. Now, the minimum current it can do is, a, is about, that's right down, is, is uh, about 7 milliamp. And that's saying six. So, oh, that's flicking between six and seven. So it's pretty close. I've trimmed that reasonably close. It's still a little bit high, but anyway. Now let's ramp it up and see what happens. About 138. It's saying there, and the mat saying 138. Look at that. It's really not. You know, if I say 130, 132. Right, I can set that to exactly 130. To pretty easily 31 32 too far 32 look I can set exactly the current and that's saying 131 132 that's flicking between 2 and 3 so it's measuring a little bit high but I can trim that now if I keep winding it up 700 800 an amp 6 the battery might have slightly recovered, so we might be able to get it to over range. No, that's about what it's set for a maximum there. 1.956, let's say 1.956, look at that. But yeah, in the minute that's barely getting hot. Of course, that's only about 2 amps at about 5 watt, uh, about five volts, so that's only dissipating about 10 watts. The MOSFET's rated at a max of 41 watts, and this heatsink, with its rating, if you assume, you know, 60 degree above amb ambient temperature rise, which, you know, is reasonable, um, then you won't want to put more than about 40 watts into the heatsink, so I'm ra rating this at max 40 watts. Max voltage is 30 volts, max current is 30 amps, but obviously you can't run at 30 volts 30 amps, because that's 600 watts, and that's way too much. But for brief periods, I'm sure it would be fine. So, yeah, basically, um, 40 watts, that's a spec. Um, we've got the terminal block there on the input. The 10 turn pot is, is great. Um, so I can adjust that. The top part of the scale is a bit, it sort of plateaus off a bit, but there we go now, it's starting to go down. So I can adjust that all the way you know, down in. Barely getting. I mean, to get, to actually tell it's getting warm, I really have to put my hand, you know, right underneath that heatsink. Even then, that's hardly getting warm. I think I'm just like completely draining the battery. The battery's pretty dead. Now that multimeter, I wouldn't trust more than 25 percent, or well, probably actually 10 percent is probably a more reasonable figure. But it says the battery is at 6.6 .6 volts. So yeah, it's, it's a pretty dead battery. So I'll hook it up to a bigger, beefier current source and see what happens. Okay, I now have an old computer power supply which has a 12 volt output, max of 4.2 amps. I'm on the 5 volt rail. I figured that's less chance of doing some damage. So now if I touch that on there, yep, we are indeed getting 6 milliamps. Okay. Let's wind the wick up. One amp. Let's put it off at 1.9 amps. So. And that's hardly oh, getting warm at all. Okay, stuff it. Let's hook it up to the 12 volt rail. Okay, now we're hooked up to the 12 volt rail. So let's see, we're starting to get warm now. That should be, what, 24 watts going into the heatsink. And yeah, it is actually warming up. I can feel it on the back of there with my fingers. I've got my fingers underneath it. And I can feel it's definitely warming up. So, yeah, it's, it's definitely working. And the, that says uh, 1.994, this was 1.99. It was saying five. Well, that says six and that says five now, so that's pretty accurate. 
Now as far as construction, that, that's just held onto the side of the inside of that heatsink with the double sided tape, this sort of double sided tape, the thin stuff. Um, the pot is held down with th the thicker foam double sided tape, which just gives a bit of room to move. That heat, that plug on the end has just got a couple of screws into the flutes in the heatsink. Actually that one's head broke off, but eh, it still holds it in position, still works. I might talk about the voltage divider on the input of that um, panel meter. Uh, you've got basically 0 to 2 volts in and you want 0 to 200 millivolts out, so you want to divide by 10. So I've got a 10k resistor and a 1k resistor and a 100 ohm pot. The 10k is the top of the voltage divider, the 1k and the 100 ohm are in a series for the bottom half. Basically the 10k is actually a bit over 10k and the 1k resistor is a bit under 1k. Um, so it, it works. It works quite well. Anyway, uh, I think that's about it. It's getting reasonably warm. I don't know what temperature, I can't bother measuring it, but I mean I can easily touch it. Quite happily touch it. I'm not sure about touching the middle of the bottom. That would get... Yeah, that's getting a bit... Ooh, that's a bit... Yeah, not, that's, that's not leave your finger on there continuously at the bottom. But there, that's fine. I mean, that's drawing... That's on the 12, that's, that's 12 volts at yeah, 2.4 amps, so whatever, 12 times, 12, 2 times is 24, that's like nearly 30 watts is dissipating. So I reckon, I reckon you get away with 40 watts into this heat sink, I reckon. If you put it up on feet, I reckon it'd be better. Now, yeah, obviously the main problem, main design problem with uh, with building a, with building it into the centre of the heatsink is great, you know, so you get a case and your heatsink all in one. The main problem is that all the parts in there obviously heat up. Now, in this thing, it's not really that much of an issue that much. I mean, obviously these resistors have a temperature coefficient, but... I'm finding it's not actually too bad. If I wind that down, I mean it's heated up now. If I wind that down to 1.68, that's saying 1.65. So that that's pretty close for after it's warmed up. That's pretty close. So I don't think that's much of a problem. Commercial product maybe, but yeah. So that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, thumbs up, all that stuff. And I'll see you next time.